When it's time to make the change from a crib to a big kid bed, I have a lot of things you need to know, and especially one key phrase you do not want to say to your child, otherwise they likely will get out of their bed. In this video and episode, I'm gonna make it really easy for you to understand how to make the change from the crib to the big kid bed. your pediatric sleep consultant. Welcome to the Little Z Sleep YouTube channel and podcast. Welcome back if you have been a longtime listener and you, or you've just checked out one of our videos. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. If you have been a, a new listener, you just found this podcast because someone sent it to you or our channel, it just popped up in your Discover feed. Yay, I am glad that you are on this journey with us. You see here on Little Z's, we want to make getting sleep help easy. And we've done that through providing these channels like our podcast, our YouTube, our blog, our Instagram, but especially we wanna help you make sleep a thing through our sleep training courses. And because you're watching this video, I wanna highlight our preschool program. This is unlike any of our plans because a preschooler obviously can talk to you and talk back to you. So it's not like sleep training a baby. Inside of my preschool sleep training course, I'm going to give you the exact script and step-by-step -step what to do. We start with an in-the-room program where you're gonna be in your child's room, supporting them and falling asleep, and then gradually getting out of their room. But what happens in the middle of the night when they obviously get out of their bed? I have exact scenarios and examples of scripts to use with your child so that you can teach them that they are fully capable of sleeping through the night. This program has been proven and trusted by pediatricians, and I am so excited for you to get your hands on it. Check out the link below and get started on our preschool sleep training course if you are ready to finally make sleep a thing for your family. When it comes to moving from a crib to a big kid bed, it's like, it's nerve wracking for you, but also exciting. And honestly, it's one of my favorite things we ever did with the girls because there's nothing like cuddling up with your kid and just like leaning, leaning on them, reading a bedtime story, getting them snuggled up and just, ooh, it's the best. So I know you're excited about that, but there are actually a few steps that we need to make so that you feel confident in this. And there's especially one phrase that I never want you to use with your child, okay? So let's walk through the quick facts on how do we know the change, it's time, and what do we do? So quick fact number one, your child is three years old and older. That's it, that's my one age requirement. Your child is three years old or up. You see, under three years old, they don't understand the consequences and the rules and the boundaries that exist with invisible boundaries. That's just not a thing. They need the crib to feel secure and confident, and that's the only way I can actually guarantee they'll sleep all night long is if they're in a crib under three. After three years old, you're gonna make this switch. The second quick fact for you is that we're going to move right to a big bed, meaning a twin or a full or a queen. You don't need to do the toddler bed. Skip that completely, it's not necessary. The third quick fact is to not drag it out, okay? Don't tell your child weeks and months in advance like, oh, you know, in five months, you're gonna have a big kid bed or in three weeks, you're gonna get a new bed. Toddlers and preschoolers have no concept of time. Even my eight-year-old does not understand time just yet. So don't prep them until it's maybe one to two days ahead of time. That'll give them an opportunity to get ready. My fourth quick fact is to get your child involved in this transition. So when it's time, make sure that they are completely aware of everything going on and don't just surprise them right when they walk in and they don't understand what their new bed is. So let's go through all of those facts now a little bit slower. And actually I'm gonna give you more insight into how to make this transition happen. Okay, so I want you to listen to this video and listen to my advice and not anybody else, tune it out. Your child cannot handle an open bed until they're three years old. So when they turn three, that's a great time to make this transition. What I prefer you to do is skip a toddler bed. In my mind, it's not that much different from a crib right? It's just the crib with the side taken off. And you might have actually purchased the crib just for this. Like, hello, I did that. Uh, before I was a sleep consultant, I bought a crib that was like the four different steps, right? It was the crib, then it was the toddler bed, and then it was a, an open toddler bed, and then it could be a twin bed one day. You actually don't need to do that. Um, skip the toddler bed completely. Why is that? Well, it's actually because this could invite your child to get out of their bed more because it's not as different as a big bed. Think about it their crib now just is open. Well, that just that's cool, I can get out of my crib now. 
Whereas if you have a big bed set up, like a twin or a full or a queen, honestly, like if you've got one laying around, just use that. Um, obviously, if you're gonna go buy a new bed, then I would do a twin or a full, um, but go ahead and set it all the way up. There is so much power in having a bed that is raised up a little, maybe a little higher than the crib was, and that looks like a real grown up bed. This means that at the same breath, I also want you to not even do a floor bed. Floor beds and toddler beds, over the years I have found, are really just invitations for the child to get out and explore their room in the nighttime. So a floor bed especially, guys, I know the Montessori community is gonna come at me like I get it, but I am anti-floor bed because there is just no difference between the mattress on the floor and the actual floor. And so when a child has a floor bed, I've worked with so many clients like this, the child had a floor bed, but they were just easy like, oh, well, there's my toe, it's just on the floor. Oh, look, now I'm in my room playing. And it's it's a lot less significant for them to have this f mattress on the floor versus an actual set up bed. So please, like sounds really easy if you conceptualize this, like we're going from crib to bed, just do a full bed. There's really no reason for them to have a toddler bed or a mattress on the floor. This is just one less transition to make. You don't have to then later go from the mattress on the floor to the mattress in the bed or the toddler bed to a big kid bed. Um, just go ahead and move straight to a twin or a full bed for your three-year-old, um, it's totally okay. With that being said, there are certain beds you might wanna look at that they aren't just instantly super tall. Maybe you wanna make sure that they are easy for your toddler to get in without assistance. And I know you might be worried like, no, I want it to be hard so that they don't get out of bed. We'll talk about that at the end of this video. But when you're changing from a crib to a bed, just go straight to a twin or a full bed, no problem at all. When you know you wanna make this change, do not talk to your toddler about it like weeks and months in advance. All you really need to do is tell them maybe a few days before you're going to do this. So if you know you're gonna make the change on Friday, tell them on Wednesday. Maybe take them to the store and allow them to pick out like a new pillow or a new bedspread or something that like makes it them too, it's just different. But I would suggest making them a part of the process. Um, every child's personality is different. I know for me, like my oldest, she, she needs to know what's happening. Surprises are not her thing. So if I were to surprise her with a brand new bed setup she would be a little taken aback and it would just take more time to adjust to. But also because kids don't understand time, um, you only need to tell them one to two nights before that big change comes. Also just a little tip, a pro tip here from talking to a lot of parents, um, make sure the bed is in your home. Like I've had parents tell the kid like, oh, on Friday, you're gonna get your new big kid bed. And then it's like shipping didn't arrive, Amazon was delayed. <laughs> um, sorry, it's not until like a couple nights from now. So make sure you have it in your house and then tell your toddler um, that it's going to happen. So um, acknowledging that it only needs to be one to two days ahead of time and then also get them involved in it by picking one or two things out for their new bed can be really fun and exciting for them too. Okay, because this age, a three-year-old and up, usually they're not napping. If your child is napping, um, which is okay, they can definitely do that. They probably have less nighttime sleep maybe like 11 to 10 hours of sleep versus 11 to 12 hours of sleep if they were not napping. But here's the thing, do not start this transition for nap time, start it at bedtime, okay? So if you have a napping three-year-old and older, make this transition at bedtime, not nap time, it's gonna go a lot easier. Now, here, settle in, because here is my one key phrase that you do not wanna tell your child. I know that you're just really worried that they're gonna get out of their bed and follow you out, but most of the time they don't do that. They're just excited, and if you have a good sleeper, they're not going to get out of their bed. They just know, well, this is what I do. Um, uh, speaking of having an, an older child who doesn't like surprises and follows the rules, I never had to tell her about getting out of her bed. That just was like not even a thought that crossed her mind, but there is one phrase that you should never tell your child, and that is, now honey, don't get out of bed, okay? You need to stay in your bed, stay in your bed, don't get out. The moment that you tell them, now don't get out of bed, they might literally have never thought about this before. And now you've like unlocked something in their brain where they're like, what? I could get out of this? So just don't even say that because to them, that thought may never have crossed their mind and now you just spoon fed them the idea and they may be like, oh, okay, so I could get out of bed. Let me test that boundary. I mean, you know how kids are. So do not even give them the concept that they could get out of bed. 
What I would rather you do is like, put the best expectations up to the front of your mind, okay? Just believe in your heart of hearts that you're gonna get them in their new bed, you're gonna say goodnight, give them hugs and kisses, and when you have an independent sleeper, this is a thing, you can say goodnight, walk out the room, close the door, they go to sleep within 10 to 15 minutes. No problem at all. Honestly, that's what happens most of the time, is the kid just goes to sleep because that's what they always do. They may actually take 20 or 30 minutes as they're kind of like laying in this new bed, like, whoa, this is amazing, this is so cool. Maybe they're like cuddling with their buddies or talking to their buddies. That's cute, wonderful, and adorable. But obviously, if your child does get out of their bed and this becomes an issue now, now we need to have some type of rewards and consequences set up for them. You could also use a toddler clock where we talk about using the four-step color system. I'll link that episode for you. Um, but we talk about using the toddler clock as red, it's time for bed. And red means we stay in our bed all night long until morning when the clock turns blue and the birdies chirp or something like that. You could use that as that cueing system for them. You could implement rewards and consequences so that when they stay in their bed, this happens. But if they don't stay in their bed, that happens. There's all kinds of different scenarios that you can use. If this now becomes like the new norm for them, they're just constantly waking up throughout the night and getting up and getting up, this would be a good opportunity to perhaps re-sleep train them. Or if you've never sleep trained your child, use that preschool training program because I'm going to teach you how to teach them to stay in their bed all night long. But the majority of you guys you're going to have no problem at all. They're gonna move straight from the crib to the open bed and they're gonna blissfully sleep because that's what they've always done. But if sleep was never a thing, then you definitely will need that preschool sleep training course to give you all those tools. The one bonus little one-liner that I'll give you is if your child who has never gotten out of the bed suddenly gets out, then you can just very calmly, that's the key, calmly, don't freak out, walk them back to their door and ask them to get back into bed and just say, it's time for bed get back in your bed, please. You could even say something like, it's time for bed. When you get back in your bed, I will come check on you in 10 minutes. I've done that a lot for our kids and that's totally appropriate, but they need to know that they need, they can get back in their bed and they can put themselves to sleep. So this transition, just as a conclusion and overview for you, this transition from crib to actual bed, meaning a twin or a full bed, this is a big deal for your kids. So make it a big deal by actually creating a set up elevated bed for them, invite them to be a part of the process. Don't tell them too soon. And then when it is time for that night, make sure you're not setting them up for failure by even giving them a hint that they could get out of their bed. Now there might be a honeymoon period for a few weeks where they're just really easily going to bed. And then they may test your boundaries and know that that's coming and that's completely normal. But what I want you to look at most of all is that this transition is one that is a huge deal for them and for you. So praise them and let them know they're doing such a good job along the way as you make this change. Make sure you see all the links below. I'm gonna include the bed that we use with our girls and any other resource that I find helpful for making this change, like physical resources and our favorite looking beds that are just for fun for you. But I am grateful that you were here with us again this week. Sweet dreams. See you next time.